Anyway, hanging on the phone right now is Lucy Zirins. Hello. Lucy, hi. Hello. So I've not dropped the phone since I last dropped the phone, so you're okay. Hello. <laughs> I can thank hear you, you great. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. No, thank you for having me on. So which room of the house are you in? I'm in my bedroom currently. I've escaped. <laughs> and your dad, Ian, who's a loyal listener of the show, he's in which other room? He's in the conservatory, his man cave. <laughs> he's been exiled. Yeah, <laughs> he's so dramatic. <laughs> he really is, isn't he? But don't tell him I said that. But um, thank you for joining us, and thanks to you and your dad for the support of our show. No, no, it's our pleasure. Thank you for the airplay. I really appreciate it. Well, you yeah, know, that's what I'm here for, isn't it? So, um, so it's going to be a short, sharp, shocking interview if you like oh gosh <laughs> are you ready for this um it's like mastermind so if you're ready you sat in the chair you got the spotlight on oh no no I no no, no don't panic <laughs> don't panic um as you can see we've got lots of people listening tonight on uh, on freedom fm so um if you could for people that haven't come across you yet um you first started playing the guitar quite young, didn't you? Yeah, I was 12 years old when I picked up the guitar. I inherited one from my uncle. Um, and then I set off gigging when I was 15, 16 years old. Went out doing open mics and, mm -hmm. and gradually got more paid gigs. And then, yeah, I've just continued to do it. <laughs> So that fa famous first guitar, then, do you still have that one at all? Or? I do, yeah. I still have my Uncle Chris's guitar. Um, I don't really play it live because it's so precious. I kind of don't want to gig it uh, for fear of someone, <laughs> for something happening to it. But, uh, yeah. but, yeah, I still have that guitar and I still write on it, which is great. So You don't want to write on it because that will mark it, won't it? <laughs> I'm sorry. I write songs on it. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your first early inspirations then to play music? Um... Well, I used to listen to a lot of my dad's vinyl um, and a lot of cassette tapes with kind of singer-songwriters on them. Um, yeah. And then, really, when I was at school, um, I just started getting into people like Carol King. My music teacher introduced me to her. And then her husband at the time, uh, Paul Corey, was playing with Michael Roach, uh, yeah. who's obviously quite a big blues name. And um, he just he gave me a slide and he introduced me to John Hartman and and John Lee Hooker and, and Sunhouse and Robert Johnson um, and that got me kind of into the earlier blues stuff as well as the, the singer-songwriter pop stuff that I liked as well and mm -hmm. a lot of folk writers so yeah, just influenced by lots of different types of music Because so, how would you describe yourself now? Because you, you're kind of across a few different genres really, aren't you? Yeah, I mean singer-songwriter is probably the best way to describe me in, in the broader sense but I mix um, blues, folk country acoustic music um to create what i hope is an original sound really i just want to write good songs so i think that the all roots genres when they come together really fit the the acoustic singer songwriter because of course i gig solo with my guitar so the songs have got to stand up on their own so yeah. i just yeah i draw influences from lots of different areas so your first ep was you were 16 yeah <laughs> and you've had a couple of eps before this but so the first ep you got songs on there that you still play? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Love Lost Blues, it's on that first um, EP I still play in my set. Uh, it's one of one of my favourite songs to play in my set because I play slide on it. Um, yeah. And, and, yeah, I've just... I mean, I've, I've written a lot more now, so obviously my set's changed, especially with getting the album out and stuff. I play, I'm playing a lot more songs from that, but I, I like to go back to covers that that I started playing at 15 and originals that I started writing when I was, you know, 16 years old as well. I think it's important to show, like, your whole journey as an artist. So, yeah, I try to give an audience a good variation in the set, really, of songs. We're, we're talking like you're still, like you're really old now, obviously you're not, so... <laughs> But can you remember the first gig that you did sat up there on your own in a pub or something like that? Yeah, the first gig I did, the first proper gig, was uh, at a social club in my area, which for, for anyone that knows, like, northern social clubs are a really harsh circuit to start on. <laughs> and my first gig, I was, yeah, I think I was 15, just turning 16, and I played to a bunch of 70-year-olds that heckled me the whole way through my set and then were <laughs> perfectly quiet for the bingo, so that was quite an experience. <laughs> That was rude of your dad to do that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I love you for saying that. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, he's a long way away from me, so that's fine. <laughs> you, you, yeah. You've recently done things like uh, blues festivals. Uh, you open up and there's a big crowd and there's lots of bands playing after you. Is it quite daunting to play to a crowd like that as well? Or? Yeah, I mean, I recently did a Doncaster Blues Festival um, and I actually I filled in for a band that were meant to be playing and opened at a, 
and open the show. And I was quite nervous because every other act that was on was male and also in, like rock blues. So I thought, how are they going to take like a, a fairly young girl coming on with an acoustic guitar and just playing songs? But mm. it actually ended up being a really, really great gig because the audience really warmed to what I did. And, I mean, I, I find it really important to interact with my audience as well. So mm. I think um, where I might lack the, the rocking guitar solo, I hopefully I make up for it by talking about my songs and, and by getting them involved with songs like Red Rooster as well. So, yeah. yeah. So we're going on to Chasing Clocks then, the, the debut album. Yep. So can you just tell us briefly how it was put together? What What was the most surprising part of the process for you, what was the the worst bits? The, the worst bits. <laughs> um, barcodes. Barcodes. Yeah. Uh, any self-releasing artist knows all, doing all the uh, the kind of data side of CDs is, and production side of it's quite quite daunting. Uh, but I mean, once you get past finding things like song codes and stuff and working out what they are, um, it, it, it comes together relatively quickly. And I mean, the music felt like like the, the the most fun and the easiest part really after all although obviously I spent a long time uh, working hard on, on those songs and getting the material ready um, actually recording in the studio was a really easy amazing process because mm. we did the whole thing live and to tape and Michael Messer um, produced my album and obviously Michael's been a mentor and friend for years so that part felt really easy so yeah I suppose it was just the business side of it that was the, the learning curve so yeah it's just it's just been great the whole process I've really enjoyed it. And how special was it when those CDs arrived in your house ready to go? <laughs> Uh, oh god, ten boxes arrived at my house and I didn't know what to do. I couldn't lift them because <laughs> they were so heavy. But yeah, I was just—I was really thrilled. It was so nice to have something that that I've I, that I've done from grassroots. You know, I've written the songs, I've arranged the songs, and mm. then I've actually done the the manufacture as well. You know, with, with obviously with a company and with the help of designers and things. But it's so nice to have a product in your hand that you that you've that you've built yourself, you know, and that you've published yourself. So, yeah, it was a really amazing process. It felt mm. like a, a long time coming. And people have actually bought it as well, so that's a bonus, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the fantastic part. I'm still kind of, I've got that feeling of one day they're going to find me out, but I'm just, <laughs> uh, I'm just loving the fact that people are enjoying the music and the feedback's been astonishing. I can't believe the, yeah. the, all the airplay and, and what the fans think, you know, they're just responding to the songs, which is great, and that's all I want, really. And and uh, your family as well obviously supported you doing all this and your dad and probably your mum's probably been doing all the posting out and <laughs> so yeah. is it, your dad's all right really isn't he yeah yeah he's great i mean when i was 15 and decided that i wanted to go out and do this he he was the one that said you know come on i'll drive you to gigs and and even now you know i drive i drive myself and i take my guitars off in my little car but when i've got gigs where i've got a lot of gear he's happy to drive me and mm. And my mum's really amazing. And my sister as well and her fiancé, they've yeah. been great. I've got really supportive family. Proper family efforts. So what's the next plans then for this al for the al rest of the album, touring and, and selling it and all sorts of things like that? What, what are you going to be up to next? Yeah, I'm going to continue to gig solo. So I've got gigs. Um, I've got a gig this Friday, which is going to be great. And, and obviously promote the CD. I'm, I'm doing as, as many uh, sessions and things as I can for radio. And then I'm also hoping for some dates, maybe in the autumn, winter of the year, um, working with the guys off the album which will be something completely new for me because I've never worked mm. with um, kind of going out and gigging with, with other musicians really I've only ever done a couple of gigs so hopefully a, a couple of dates in the autumn or you know maybe a full tour we'll see what happens <laughs> Yeah and hopefully uh, one day come down this way maybe visit the studio and come and bring your guitar down here as well that'd be good Yeah I'd love to I'd love to come in it'll be great <laughs> So before I let you go and play the track that I'm going to play, yeah. um, and hopefully you'll stick around for the rest of the show in your in your room. <laughs> um, grape heads are they your favourite sweets? <laughs> Was this the curveball question? Yeah. <laughs> grape heads, yeah, I, I love grape head sweets. I'm absolutely obsessed with uh, American candy. I found these new things called Mike and Joe grape sweets, which are really <sighs> good. So. Oh, can you send me the link? I, I will send you the link. We're, we're bonding over American sweets, aren't we? <laughs> We've got to, haven't we? They were they were great. The grape heads, I like those. Oh, good. I'm glad you enjoyed them. <laughs> Thanks for the tip. Again, thank you very much for taking the time to, to spend a few minutes talking to us. No, that's great. Thank you for having me on the show. Brilliant stuff. And 
I've chosen a song and then hope you, hope you don't mind me playing Hours to Waste. Oh, no, it's, that's um, it's kind of the most bluesy track, I guess, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah. Oh. So what I'm going to do is just be rude and cut you dead in a second <laughs> and uh, play this one. But thanks very much, and we'll speak again soon. No, thank you. Enjoy Brilliant. the rest of the show, everyone listening. <laughs> Cheers. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. I'll just sit here and wait for you Didn't think I'd miss anyone like I miss you And in the night when my heart grows cold Well, it's you that I need to hold That's the time it's true Guess that I'll just have to wait for you I'm always wondering what's going through your mind When you're alone and you're trying to waste your time Just like I do So far from home It won't be long now Where we both say But we know That it doesn't always Feel that way I'm always wondering What's going through your mind When you're alone And you're trying to waste your time Thanks again to Lucy Zirin's Chasing Clocks is the album. Go and get it now, lucyzirins.com.